planes flying by while I was trying to film. So, hello again and welcome to this new video everybody. Today, as you can see, we are playing around with pumpkin, getting into the Halloween mood. But that is not today's topic. Today, as usual, was in all of my videos, we are talking about either photography or filmmaking. In this case, it's filmmaking. Today, I'm going to give you some tips on how to shoot nightclub videos because that's what I'll be doing tonight and I'll be showing that video <laughs> Why do I like to film outside? Uh, and I'll be showing that video to you in this video maybe now Big deals, big wheels Come with me, you looking for a quick thrill Fish tail, hanging at the windshield Click trail, tell your bitch chill So yeah, I hope you liked the video. It's just a short clip of it. It's not the whole video. The whole video is a minute long and I thought I wouldn't put the whole thing in there so that you get more or less an idea of what I'm talking about and what I'm going to try to tell you how to create because there are some tips that you might want to follow which will help you out when shooting your own nightclub video for yourself or for a client. But first, let me finish off my pumpkin and then we'll get right into the tips. like that little intro sequence right there with our pumpkins. I hope you like the pumpkins. I'm actually quite happy with my one and I think Melly's quite happy with her one. But anyway, we're talking about nightclub videos. And I just counted my list of tips I have for you. Today we have six tips, so let's get straight to it. Tip number one would be to stay or be spontaneous. What I'm trying to convey with this is that you shouldn't plan out a nightclub video because with too much planning can be quite restrictive to your video, especially in nightclubs, because pretty much anything happens at parties like that and just in a club where everybody's having a fun time and having a good time and just dancing around. You shouldn't really make a plan because it's quite difficult to find exactly what you were looking for. So just by staying spontaneous and open to everything, you can pretty much have an easy time when editing. And that is what I would actually advise you to stay or to be. Stay spontaneous. And that brings us straight to tip number two, which would be to always shoot with a light. I started shooting this a few months ago for this uh, event here in my town. I immediately brought an LED light powered by batteries from newer with me because I thought that that would definitely benefit my videos and I was correct. It would be pretty much impossible without because you know nightclubs are dark and sometimes like really pitch black and all in all even if they're dark and you're shooting like with an f1.7 and an ISO of 3200 and the image will look all right but just after a while it just you'll just notice that the video is too dark and you want to have a light with you so I can definitely recommend the one from you it's dimmable and uh, you even get two like things in front of it to change the white balance of the light itself one warm and one neutral uh, I always use the neutral though and it only costs about 30 bucks I think if I remember right so it's really cheap uh, you can get it on Amazon I'll leave the link down below oh and by the way in case you were wondering how I use the light I do not hold it in my hand and the camera in the other hand or something I have a mount on the top of my camera and most cameras have a mount like that for lights so just check it out on your camera and it should be able to fit and so let's get straight to tip number three which would be to be quick you need to be fast when shooting these videos because first of all everybody's dancing and intensely moving and if you want to capture the perfect moment especially at this nightclub where I'm going to today again you often have these you could say mini shows like uh, if somebody orders a special drink or something they bring it in a big like parade style way they have a little show with confetti and stuff like that sometimes even and to catch that moment you always have to be very attentive and uh, keep attention on what is happening and be quick but also when you're using your light you need to remember that uh, you are just kind of being annoying maybe to some people because I mean I wouldn't like it that much in the nightclub if somebody would all the time be shining a bright light at me so just be quick I usually try to keep the shot about four seconds long I shoot at 50 frames per second so in case I need it to be longer I can always uh, slow it down by 50% um, but yeah, usually I just turn on the light, shoot for like three to four seconds and then turn it off again so that nobody gets annoyed by me and my light, you know. And that brings us to tip number four, which is a tip that I only noticed after shooting for the first time because uh, the first time I kind of made a mistake and did it wrong. I got a lot of establishing shots and a lot of like really cool b-roll and then slowly faded into the party itself but actually showing like first they're having a few drinks and then the party starts 
but that's not what my client was looking for and I noticed that uh, that's what most people are not looking for. Most people just want to go straight into the party so like you have the song with a tiny little intro like 10 seconds at the very most and then you go straight to the party. You don't need establishing shots, you don't need b-roll of the location and stuff like that. I mean like a little you can do some safety b-roll of the location but it's not really important. Mainly you should always capture the emotions of the people and the emotional expressions they have, dancing, have a good, good time, smiling around and that is what you should mainly be concentrating on capturing because yeah, as I said, establishing shots are cool in your video if you're trying to have a good intro but most clients don't look for that because if they want to post a one minute video on it, their Instagram, which is what these guys are doing and what I'm doing for them, uh, they want the action to start straight away or at least like late at latest 10 seconds after the intro so uh, keep that in mind. And tip number five would be that you definitely have to figure out your client and know exactly what the client wants. This actually sounds kind of obvious, but I didn't do it right the first time, so maybe you're not going to do it right either, so just in case, I'm warning you. Um, for example, that I told you, the establishing shots, I did that wrong, but also as well that I got the music wrong. You need to know, especially for nightclub videos, these people have a certain music taste and they want that music in their video. And in case they weren't really clear, in my case they didn't really tell me anything at all. I even asked them, I think, if I remember right, and they said, ah, it doesn't matter, just put any music. So I had some upbeat house music, here's a little part of that. In the end, I was quite disappointed actually because on their Instagram they then posted a re-edit of that video with a different track. And so yeah, I took that as feedback and noticed, oh wait, that's not at all the music that they liked and, and I messed that up quite a bit. So um, the next time, I, actually I was happy that they took me again for their second time and uh, the next time I then asked them what music do they want and it turned out that they will just send me a few tracks that they think cool and I can just choose one of them and that's what we're going to do tonight again. And uh, so yeah, figure out your client. Also, things you should know is when to turn up at the club and uh, to know that you are definitely on time, not too late. And also, uh, you should find out where your video is going to be released, if it's going to be for YouTube, is it going to be for Instagram or for Facebook or something completely different. Just that, first of all, the aspect ratio would be quite important and also the length of the video because on Instagram you can only post videos up to one minute and the restrictions like that you always need to have keep in mind and that and therefore you should always know where they're going to release your video. And last but not least tip number six which is also something I didn't quite get right the first time, no I think it, it happened to me last time, the second time so actually, is that you take care of your gear. First of all I've heard lots of stories about people losing their gear because it got stolen that luckily hasn't happened to me. I usually don't take much gear with me anyway because of exactly that reason. Um, the first time I had two lenses with me, my zoom lens and this one. Now I just keep this set up, the Lumix GX80 with the Panasonic 20mm f1.7 plus the light on top and I just run around with that and uh, actually the place where I put my stuff, I don't really have any gear left there anyway so there's not really much to steal. And yeah, so first keep in mind that your gear might be stolen, but also keep in mind that people are intensely moving and there are drunk people around as well who might just hit your camera by mistake. That luckily hasn't happened to me due to one technique you see all the time by photographers and filmmakers in the club. Just hold your camera up like this and walk through the crowd and just hold your camera up and most people shouldn't be able to reach it uh, by mistake. I mean, of course, if people want to do it on purpose, they're assholes, but whatever. Uh, but the one thing that happened to me, which you need to be careful of, are the machines in the club. For example, the fog machines. That's what happened to me. I was walking with my technique, the, uh, the camera up here, and my camera was just passing the fog machine and I didn't know that it was there. And it straight on fired suddenly, straight into this lens, right here. And uh, yeah, so I was quite worried that my lens took quite the damage. But as you can see, it's working fine, but just in case, Maybe, I don't know, maybe some coating on the glass itself got damaged. I don't really know, I don't see much difference. But still, it's not exactly nice to have a fog machine blow the fog right into your lens. Uh, and I did have to like clean it up a little. Um, but still, it didn't take big damage. But just in case uh, you don't want that to happen to your lens, I don't at least, again, uh, keep that in mind that there are things like fog machines and probably some other stuff that you need to be careful of. And that's pretty much it. I hope these tips were somewhat helpful for you and for your next club video I'll be going out in a few hours still. It's, I mean you can see it's still bright so um, it's not even late yet. Uh, 
But yeah, tonight's gonna be a long night and I hope the video is going to be good. I mean, you've seen a part of it already because I said that I'll put it in the, in the beginning. But anyway, uh, if you found any valuable information in this video, I would appreciate if you like it. And also, if you want to see more content like this, feel free to subscribe and I'll hopefully see you again next week.